Hey, what's going on, friends? If you're chiming into this call, I know it's an impromptu, but uh, say hello in the comments and the chats. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to jump on since this was a very last minute uh, throw together call. And then we can uh, chat about validators because my inbox has got way too many questions than I could possibly answer. So I'm going to do it in this kind of forum where we can kind of set some clarity out there about the validators. I may not have all the perfect answers, but I've got most of them. I've got a pretty clear understanding of how it works. And so I think a lot of people are lost at the basics. I think that's the biggest issue today. So we're going to try and cover those issues from the basics up. And then hopefully that eases enough clarity or eases the questions, provides enough clarity. That's a little better. And from there, people have to just wait and see for all the final details when they come out. <laughs> but we'll be in a good spot collectively, hopefully. And this recording will be out there that people can share it and use it. And we will post it in groups like the Aldo group, of course, as well, which is you know very uh, validator centric. We will go from there. So. Yo, what's going on? Good. We got some people showing some life in the comments. Anyone else on the chat today? I know it's uh, very impromptu. So I'm going to wait, just for those of you who know, I'm going to stall out just a little touch so we don't start answering questions. And then people come on and say, like, okay, but what I don't understand is the thing you just explained two minutes ago. So um well, there are two ways to get it, Tony. You can mint it into existence or you can trade it on Pancake Swap for USDT. All right, there we go. Very nice. Good to see some lemons in here. I like it. Some lemon heads. Hello, everyone. Very good. What's going on, Rick? Good stuff. Uh, I believe Jason and the partner are coming on. I sent him the link for this actual call. So if he's got time, he might jump on and join us. And I told him if he wants to bring the partner on in a half hour from now, if that would work out for him, that will that will be good. I'll, we'll still be on the call and they'll just jump on. But in the meantime, I'm going to try and take on some of these questions because my inbox is out of control. There's no possible way I can help everybody one on one. So it's time to do some group calls. So that's what we're doing. Do some group calls. Hello, Nadine. Hello, Tony. What's going on? What's going on, Pat? Very good. Thomas, what's going on? Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Norway, love it. Yeah. Is it Jan? Hopefully I pronounced that per correctly. Uh, very cool. Awesome to see it. Love it. Love the international crowd coming on. So I'm going to start here in about 30 seconds. So get your pen and papers, write the stuff down because we got so many repetitive questions in the main chats and my inbox is just absolutely flooded with repetitive questions and I just can't, can't, can't do it one-on-one. -on -one. It's not possible. So we will get this handle from today. What's going on, Diane? All right. All right, you guys got a pen and paper, hopefully, uh, or you're typing on a keyboard, whatever you want to do, but we're about to get into it. So let's cover just the basics first, okay? I want to preface this by stating, if I state anything wrong today, it's coming from good intentions. Jay and I do chat regularly, but it's always in sound bites. And uh, I think I understand, I think I've connected all the dots, but if I've misspoken on something, the clarity will come out, deep breath, just be patient, it's gonna come out, you'll see it when it comes out. But let's cover the fundamentals. The cost of being a validator is 5,000 USD value paid in LEMX only. Or let me try that one more time. 5,000 USD value paid in LEM X only. And you are essentially, for all practical purposes, buying the license to be a validator, right? Now we know you're committed to the network or you wouldn't have done this. There has to be some barrier to entry. Otherwise, you have bad actors who are managing and literally owning a part of your blockchain. Essentially, in all practical purposes, the validators actually own the network. There is no blockchain without validators. We are essentially the blockchain. The blockchain requires lots of hardware, memory, processing power, all that good stuff. <clears throat> and we as validators collectively are a decentralized owners of the network. And since the blockchain cannot exist without validators, there are rewards rewards god i'm struggling with that word the past few days um 
there are rewards for supporting and validating transactions on the network. Now it's called block chain because there are blocks of information in the old legacy blockchains. They were in sequence and that's why it looked like a chain. So that's why the term blockchain came, came from. And there are still sequential blocks, but now in more advanced blockchains like ours, you can get asymmetric data points in there and kind of let the validators reorganize them, if you will, for ease of understanding. And so we create these blocks on the blockchain, which are immutable records. These are records that you cannot go back in time and change the records. That's what makes a blockchain a truth machine, which is fantastic. And so we are building this truth machine. And what, what, do we, what kind of data goes into there? Well, mostly all financial and transactional data, but that's what's required. It is a financial network after all. And so validators get rewarded for supporting, maintaining, and essentially as a group forming the actual blockchain. And so what happens? You need a certain set of hardware, right? Now you can, in theory, host the hardware in your home. You could buy mini, what's called mini computers. You could literally buy mini computers that are powerful enough in theory to support the blockchain, but that comes with a few unique sets of problems. Number one, you need to guarantee internet uptime. You also need to guarantee power uptime. You know, what happens if you live in an area where there are hurricanes or tornadoes and something comes along and knocks down the internet for a week or knocks down all the power lines for a week? you all of a sudden are not a validator on the network. And so as someone who is a validator, who has the license to be a validator, you would be losing out on a lot of money during that downtime. And you don't want to do that. And also the speed, reliability, and um, all that great stuff that comes with a blockchain is predicated upon the validators. In the Bitcoin case, it's the miners. There is no Bitcoin without the miners. And so since we are not proof of work, right, we're kind of like a hybrid model, but because that they're instead of called being called miners, they are being called validators, but it's a very similar concept. And so we as validators are not going to validate transactions on the network. And so it's not just about having the hardware. And that's why we recommend cloud solutions, because in a cloud environments, usually most data centers are actually built on the biggest largest internet cables in the world they are that that is those are the main central access points to the internet so you guarantee extreme speed if anyone's ever tried to do a transaction on bitcoin it's so goddamn slow it's such a pain in the ass you need speed when it comes to and i don't know about you guys but my wi-fi here goes in and out all the time and yes you could get starlink and that would cost you some more upfront money and probably provide a lot more reliable um, internet connection. So that's a, that's a possibility, right? Um, it is an option, but then what about backup power? A cloud has backup power. What happens if, there, if there's some kind of maintenance or engineering required? Do you have the technical know-how and skills? Do you even have the technical know-how and skills to install, to operate a Linux box? Because I think it's going to be Linux. I may be wrong if I'm misspeaking. And I'm pretty sure it's Linux. Most servers are. And do you have the skill set and the knowledge set to then go operate a Linux box and then install Linux software and maintain Linux software on there? My guess is probably not, but cloud environments are full of engineers who know how to do exactly this. And clouds, in a cloud warehouse, you've got these massive, 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 like Tesla style giant uh, battery packs on the walls that, that are backup power situations. So if there was a hurricane that, went, that came through, or a tornado or a lightning strike or a whatever, uh, those those power, that power there gets restored. It's always got 100% uptime. So that's pretty good. Um, someone's asking about, will there be guidance provided to configure the validators? Yeah, but not a lot. <laughs> it's just like, not a lot. You're probably gonna download something like a PDF and a software program of some kind. And if you can't figure it out from there, you're probably SOL. And again, it makes way more sense to be in a cloud. Uh, so that's definitely my recommendation. Jay and I talked about it yesterday on the live. And Jay was also, of course, recommending validating on cloud being the best option. It is a superior option for so many reasons. But 
you do have the other option if you choose to do it. What's up, Frankie? It's good to see you on here, man. So you do have the option if you want to. So let's talk about the rewards. How do rewards get generated for validators and what kinds of rewards are there? There are gas fees on the chain, every single transaction. That's all that BNB that you do in the Binance Smart Chain. That's gas fees, gas fees, gas fees. Uh, that quarter, 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 quarter. I, I don't know the exact fees for our LEM chain, but I think it'll be about that. That's kind of what I'm expecting. It'll be cheap, but there should be a small cost on it. It's still much cheaper than the Visa or MasterCard network, right? So the old SWIFT system, it's much better than that. It's definitely not Bitcoin or Ethereum, which could be thousands of dollars in gas fees, but probably something along the lines of Binance where it's quarter, 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 right? But as the chain grows in popularity and use cases, it could end up being millions of transactions a day. It could, in theory, become millions of transactions an hour. And it's quarter, 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 quarter. And that gets divided up value-wise, to the validators. The validators are the ones who get those blockchain, those gas fees. And so every time when you guys are minting and staking on Binance, let me tell you, the validators over on Binance love people like us generating constant gas fees for them. They love that stuff, right? Just like us as validators, we're not going to hate it. As long as it's reasonable, we're not going to hate it, right? Because we're also going to be users of the network as well. So then a portion, I don't think it's 100%, but a portion of the minting fees that happen on the chain for the NFTs is also considered a reward to the validators that goes to the validators. Now, there's multiple ways to set up a model of how the validator works and how validators are rewarded. On a lot of chains, you would instantly get those gas and minting fees dropped into your wallets as validators. However, this may change. There are still some last minute conversations and decisions that are going to get made. But as it stands right now, those gas and minting fees would not go directly into your wallet. They would go into, they would get locked up basically into pooled funds, which will make more sense when I talk about the next portion here. And it's going to kind of go into the, into that kind of pool, right? It's going to get automatically locked up. So it's not going to operate like cash flow. Now, some chains do that. So if you've read or heard that or watched videos about it, then it's totally understandable why you would have that understanding. But on our chain, it is currently set up to be a little bit different. And so maybe that changes, maybe it doesn't. But as it stands, that's the deal. Um, so... Now, um, that's that component. The next thing, and I saw something in the questions. I got to take that on later. So it distracted me. I apologize. The next thing you need to understand is that for validators, one of the things that you're going to have the option to do, right? The option to do is to stake your own LEMX coins. Now, this locks up the supply of the entire network, which is awesome, right? So you're going to lock up your LEMX coins, And when those Limex coins are locked up, you're going to get a return. So I'm going to use some loose math. I think I'm in the ballpark, but do not quote me on it because it is variable based on a wide variety of things that can happen. And also, hey, those who are architecting, it may change their minds. I'm just trying to give you an overview, a gist, an understanding so you can connect the dots of how a validator works, how you're rewarded, why it's, why it's, you know, something you may want to consider. So when you lock up those rewards, the longer you lock it up, the more valuable it is to the chain because we want an entire supply that's locked up. So when waves of money hit on the on a non-existent supply, it's a supply and demand equation. The pressure on the coin to go up in value becomes far, far, far greater when all the coins are locked up. And so in our model, you're going to get a chance to lock it up for, I think the maximum is going to be up to three years. As I currently understand it, so don't quote me, but as I currently understand it, and of course it may change even if I am correct. So don't get, don't get pissy down the road when you, you got your, a few wires crossed or a few little details are not quite exactly as you were hoping, but you're going to lock them up and you're going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of probably about 240% over that three year period. And it will be paid, I believe in Lem X coins. Right. So if you stake 100 LEMX at the end of your lockup period, you're going to get that 240 
multiple on your LAM X. Okay. Then there is other people who want to stake. There is no way to stake in this ecosystem without going through a validator. The validators are the guardians of the network and they get rewarded for doing so. And so if you want to, if you don't have enough money to be a validator or you've chosen not to be one for whatever reason, but you'd like to get some extra returns on, on the Lemex that you're holding, then you can delegate your Lemex, okay? You can delegate your Lemex with a validator and stake it with them. And there'll be umpteen amounts of time variables that you can stake. And the longer you stake, the more you get paid, the less you stake, the less you get paid. Now, when that delegated stake gets done on your box, about, about approximately, it's going to be about an 80-20 situation. About 80% of the staking rewards will go to the validator. And about 20% of those rewards will go to the delegated staker. So the delegated staker has a reward for sure for staking that they would not have had they not done it. But the delegate, the validators, because they are so crucial to the network, get a very juicy benefit as a validator when delegated stakers come on board, right? And so we'll see what those per percentages are because they're going to vary a lot by all the time metrics and variables, right? But let's just use an example. If there was an 80% return on the staking, about 65% would go to the validator and about 15% would go to the delegated staker. Correct? Got it? Okay. Now, people want to know where does the cash flow come in this current model of validating? Well, the cash flow component of this comes from the fact that a lot of delegated stakers may be doing very short-term staking, right? A lot of them could be doing it for all kinds of different time windows, but a lot of them will be short. And you could, in theory, have one new delegated staker every day. And as the network grows, you might have 100 new delegators on your validator every single day. It might be 100 new ones, all with different time frames and time stamps. And so when that delegated stake contract terminates, that's when you get paid and that's when the delegator gets paid. And then when you get paid when, when from their delegated stake, the validator then can choose what they want to do with the rewards, the proceeds from that delegated stake. So you could take that amount and send it over to your LemPay account, over to your Lem card, that kind of thing, and use it as you please. And because... As the network grows, there will always be delegated stakes that are expiring. That's going to serve the cash flow function in our model. So that's how delegators will get cash flow. Now, the other thing that's important to understand about delegators is they also are in control of, because they control and they basically are the blockchain, that's where all voting all voting on chain happens and delegators can participate in the voting as well, but they must do so through the through the validators. And I believe NFT holders will also have votes, but NFT holders are also, as I currently understand it, also going to have to go through the validators for things like voting as well. And the here's the another insane part that's happening on our chain. I think you need to understand if you're considering being a validator because that changes everything, I think, right? Every validator has a maximum amount of tokens that can be staked at any point in time. So there are, there are a total of 5,000 validators. And you can have a total of 5,000 LEMX coins staked on your validator node at any one time. Now, here's what's great. All of that founders, all those founders LEMX tokens that came out, right, in the initial 10 days, right, before the retail NFTs came out, all of those tokens are locked up. Those are locked up and they want to get a return on their money as well, right? So they're not allowed to sell them in the market and they don't want them to be idle. So guess what they are going to do with those tokens? All those founder tokens are going to get staked on the nodes with the validators. So the validators will get those tokens staked on their box. And I believe, I may have done the math wrong, but I think 
it will be somewhere in the neighborhood. So do not quote me in case I've done the math wrong because I just did it quick. There will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500 of, of the founders tokens because those are going to be round robin. Those are going to go round robin throughout the validators, right? And those, those founder tokens are then going to get staked on your validator node about 2,500 per validator. Now, that's assuming there are 5,000 total, of course, right? So we get our original 5,000. You divide up those founders tokens amongst those 5,000 boxes. They want to get staked. They want to get a return. I'm only giving you issues today, but you're going to get that as well staked onto your box. And remember, friends, that is a large sum of Lemex tokens who are eventually likely, not guaranteed, but likely to have a very high nominal value. And so you are going to get, as the validator, you get the 80% of the rewards, including when the founders stake with the validators. So when the founders tokens get staked with validators, you are going to get about 80% of those rewards, and they are going to get about 20%. Now, the founders are still going to be very happy because they're staking a very large sum of Lemex tokens, which would be high nominal value. So they are going to be happy with their returns and the validators are going to be also be very happy with their squeeze of the juice that they get from those tokens being staked on those validators. All right. Are you guys starting to get the picture of what the benefit is to be a validator? And so again, it's not about fixed return. I see people like, what's the ROI on this thing? It's not about an ROI play. It's not, it's not fixed. There's constantly, nonstop, all kinds of variables moving all the time for how long, how short, new, new delegators, new delegators today, five delegators expired yesterday, so those returns are gone, those contracts close, the money hits your account. Every time a delegated staking contract closes, the money's going to hit your account, whatever is due to you as the validator. And it will also hit the delegator's account, whatever is due to the delegator on that time frame. It is all done by smart contract. It is all trustless. You do not need to trust the validator. The validator does not have control of the funds. The validator does not have access to those wallets. The validator cannot go and steal those funds from you. Okay? So you as a delegator can go on there, though, and get a nice juicy return. Let's say you know that there is a new NFT launching, a new project, a new L2 project launching 10 days from now. And you know you want to participate, but your tokens are sitting there for 10 days doing nothing. Are you able to go and grab those tokens, delegate a stake with a validator? That's going to be round robin done. It's all going to be done round robin, all right? So you don't have to advertise. You don't have to get people to come to your particular validator. It's all round robin. But then a delegator wants to lock up their tokens only for those 10 days. They're going to get a lower return than if they locked it up for three years, but they're going to get a return. The 10 days is up, the contract ends, they get their tokens plus, plus an interest reward back to them, and you as a validator for facilitating it gets your reward when that 10-day contract closes. That person now has access to their funds, they can take those funds and go mint some more NFTs. Are you guys, are you guys getting it? Guys, am I doing a decent job? Chime in in the chat if I sound like I'm talking Chinese or if I'm making friggin' sense here to you guys, and you're starting to get the picture. I'm not asking you to memorize every last detail. I'm not even guaranteeing you that I have every last detail correct. I'm just trying to end the confusion, especially since validators are now out. Tell people understand what it is to be a validator and what the rewards are for being a validator and giving you roughly how things will operate on this chain. So in some validator chains, the gas fees and the mint fees would hit their wallet nonstop and the validators could go and spend that. In this case, it's going into the lockup account. And so you're still going to do very well on that. It still is a reward due to you as a validator, but you can't use it kind of like cash flow. Jason's idea here is that when you have constant and never-ending short-term delegator stakes that are ending constantly, that that will serve as the cash flow a validator may be seeking while supporting the chain. And on top of that, a validator can also own a lot of NFTs that continue to print, print for lack of understanding, for, for ease of understanding, 
print new tokens for you that you can use as you see fit. And maybe at that point in time, the being a validator is very lucrative. And so ergo, you use the NFT printing that you had as kind of like your, you know, the spending cash, so to speak, right? Uh, because you don't need it because the validators are, are accumulating you lots of juicy long-term rewards. Thank you. Yeah, okay, it's good. It's making holly. We're making sense. Yes. Okay, there we go. We're making sense. All right, what was that? Can you stake multiple times? Yes. Yeah, you can constantly, like, you could be constantly in and out of contracts as well yourself. But you, what you can't do, okay, so you can leave a... Va Let me explain something else. As I currently understand it, you can basically leave a validator in a completely locked state, right? It's like you do a three-year lockup, you're going to get maximum returns, and you can't just unlock that as you please. No. But the, you can open up, as I currently understand, you can open up a new contract with brand new LAMX tokens that you've recently received and make some of those short-term uh, short lockups. Yes, you can do that, right? So you can grab new tokens, create a short-term lockup. But once you lock in your tokens, they're locked. Got it? Okay, so... Awesome. All right. Good. I like them. Massive. Frankie's getting it. The light bulbs are going off for him. I like it. Uh, variable, variable contracts. Three years being the maximum, as I currently understand, which pays the highest rewards. The longer you stake, the more you get. Yeah, good. Understanding it. Good. I like it. I get it. Yes. I'm doing something good. You see that? I'm not just a pretty face for radio. Look at that. Yes, which is why I'm getting two validators. Okay, somebody understands it. Okay, very nice. I can see that Suzanne is getting some light bulbs going off. All right, here we go. What cloud service? I okay, all right. Let me take this question on. Okay, so none of those options have been put out. So nobody should get their knickers in a knot trying to sort that out and get it sorted out. The hardware requirements, requirements have already gone out <clears throat> and you will probably get some maybe slightly suggested hardware options. You can, in theory, give all your money to Jeff Bezos, Kill Gates, and, uh, you know, all those criminals, and their cloud options will exist. Those options will exist. But there will also be multiple, probably not just one, cloud options for smaller, more decentralized clouds, and you're going to pay X number of monthly fee. But here's the secret sauce. If the founders are locking up 2,500 LEM tokens on your on your validator box, uh, the cost of, of hosting is irrelevant. The cost of hosting becomes irrelevant. Like I, I wouldn't even, I would rather support a small local cloud, even if I wasn't involved with one at all, which I am involved with one, but even if I wasn't, I would still prefer, because I vote <clears throat> with my dollars in my life. That's how I do it. I don't go to chain restaurants. I support local small businesses. I try and avoid every chain store imaginable. And I'm happy to pay a little bit extra on a small cloud than I would to give it to Jeff Bezos in a heartbeat. <clears throat> but that's just me and you will have the choice. But it's going to be insignificant. If, if, if 2,500 founders tokens are on your validator box, do you care if the cost are, is $90 or $100? $17. I mean, I just don't think you're going to. I don't know those exact questions about when the gas and the mint fee portion is. If I were a guessing man, that's one thing I'm not clear on, but if I were a guessing man, I think it would mirror the amount, the, the time and duration that you already have committed to staking on the box. Right, you as a value yourself, your own tokens. If you lock for three years, this will probably just accumulate and add to your three year pool. It's kind of what I'm suspecting, but I can't confirm that. Thanks, well said. There you go. Excellent for this rookie. All right, we're getting it done. All right, doing great. Thank you. Okay, good. Ah, oh, it's making sense. Good. Glad we're understanding it. Following good. Everyone's figuring out the validator deal. <clears throat> You guys are like all validator experts all of a sudden. Look at that. All it took was one short 20-minute chat, and we got this shit all handled, right? Good. 
Good, good, good. We're getting it. We're getting it. Uh, no, not necessarily, Joe, right? Like, well, uh, let me answer that question the best way I can. There is going to be a little bit of a lag <clears throat> between you committing to being a validator and everything being operational because I don't believe, but I could be wrong. I don't believe the staking starts tomorrow, for example. And I suspect we probably have to wait until the L1 blockchain is live. Probably have to wait till the bank is set up properly. I think it's going to operate through Lem Bank. And I think you probably need to wait for the blockchain. So, and, uh, but in the early days, is it possible that lots of delegators start showing up and just doing, you know, one week lockup periods while they're waiting for, let's say, a new L2 project to come out? That would give you some hits. And, you know, that would give you some hits and you could do as you please with them. Yeah, to token printing. One token up, sir. Sir, when token up, all of these are recorded always. Can we order validators now? Well, you can today. I don't know if it's exactly now, now, but it's you can today. So that's good. Great explanation. Good, Nadine. Glad it makes sense. We're making sense. Yes. Yes. Gas fees. Sense. But nonstop, right? It's like, brrr, it's like Jerome Powell kind of gas fees as the chain gets large and popular. Here's the thing, friends. One thing I can't guarantee you, and I'm certainly not here to do it, and hashtag not financial advice. You know, I'm not a legal advisor, not a financial advisor, not a whatever, whatever. You guys get it. I'm not, I'm just here trying to educate you and let you decide what makes sense to you, but I'm trying to help you understand it so you can understand what you're saying yes or no to, and then you decide what makes sense for you. And I'm a volunteer. I don't collect any of the funds anyway, so you do as you please. But um, try and help because I care about the future of this project. Here's the deal, friends. If if the chain is very successful over the long term, this will probably prove to be one of the greatest decisions you've, you've ever made. But there's no guarantee that it will be as popular and as highly used as one hopes for and as it's being architected for. If it is not a very popular chain, you know, it won't be as juicy as you were hoping. That's just basically what it boils down to. But this is like a juice machine. This is like a juice factory. This is like owning a juice factory. There's a great, great metaphor. It's a juice machine. Can you buy multiple validators? I believe so, but I'm not positive on that. But what they won't let anyone do is centralize the control of the validators. But you might be able to pick up two. I'm just not clear on that. So I don't know. We'll see. Money easy. There you go. I like it. It's good. Yeah, listen, it doesn't matter if you're on the same cloud because all clouds, at least over time, even small new ones are going to have geo redundancy. They're going to be in multiple locations. And there's always going to some going to be some people who don't want that particular option and choose another option for whatever reason. And that's how it kind of diversifies itself. Can we send our Lemex rewards there? Uh, not sure what that question means. So I'm going to go on to the next one. I'm not following. Regarding the validator pools, if we join those, are we part of that validator forever? Yes, correct. Right? I mean, yes, forever is a is a hard term to use in life for anything, right? But yes, we you if you join an Aldo validator pool, you are like a fractional owner of the license to be a validator. And then something has to be worked out for the hardware and software component of that validator that supports the network. And so everyone who is a fractional owner is probably going to split the cost of that. That's what makes the most sense. And then you will also split the rewards. Yeah, it's very cool, Diane. Good. Um, Mark, I have, I, I mean, I've talked to Joe about this many, many times, so I have not gotten a definitive answer, but he has absolutely sent me what he's thinking. I just don't want to speak on his behalf yet until he makes it official, but I see no reason to expect that a CloudX option won't exist. And by the way, friends, full disclosure, yes, of course, I own some hardware and yes, I own a DAO seat with that cloud. And basically almost the entire cloud is owned by Lemonheads. So 
you get to choose, but why not support your own? It's almost all Lemonheads who own that cloud, which is kind of cool, right? I think it's just fantastic. Everybody wins and everyone supports each other, right? It's about voting with your dollars about where, well, you know, what you want to support, what future do you want for everyone to have. So, no, you get to choose how long you lock up the pools. Uh, soon, very soon. Uh, let's see here. I'm not technically inclined at all. So it'll be cloud service. That's the idea. Cloud service has engineers that are just going to white glove everything for you. You don't have to think about anything. You just send them the information and, and, and cover your costs associated and they'll take care of everything for you. How great is that? Uh, I think I just did exactly that with the Aldo pools. Let's see pre-sale. There we go. Um, then you're covering the cost of founder staking. Uh, founders probably aren't going to lock up for three years. They're probably not. Uh, I think that I think they contractually obligated to do one, and they're going to be incentivized to do at least two. So that's exciting, but I don't. Yeah, so we'll see how that all plays out. Yep, everything's already been shared in there. Use the search button, friends. Please use the search button. Those groups are so clogged. And it's the same question 48 times every single day. And that's why we do a lot of lives all the time to try and get rid of the questions. And yes, you are responsible for watching the recordings if you couldn't make it live. It's just, it's on you. Because if you don't, then you're being inconsiderate and to everyone else in the group who did make the time to do it by asking questions that were covered over and over and over and over and over again. Because it's always the same questions. Every question has been answered so many times. From my understanding, all those states that the total cost will come out of the profits, then be distributed to everyone. Yeah, exactly. So there's a there's going to be a there's going to be hard fixed costs. That would be your cloud. Oops, sorry. There'll be hard fixed costs, your cloud costs. Those are going to be extracted from the distributions. And then all those taking a, a management fee as he should for all the hard work, uh, which is small. Uh, so that those things will be taken off the top and the rest of the distributions will go out and everyone gets to share in the love. So cool and fantastic, right? White glove service, nothing to think about. Who wants to learn all this techie crap? I mean, why would you want to do that? White glove, 100%. Oh, by the way, here's another thing you need to know. If you sign up for a cloud service with Google, Azure, Microsoft, AWS, any of those, and you think, yeah, I'm going to show them, you know, I have a friend who owns a box over there and I don't like that guy, so I'm going to show them, or I'm going to save myself $14.99 a month. When you see how lucrative validators are, saving $14.99 a month is the least of your concerns. But if you do with AWS in them, what they're going to send you is a login and you're going to have to figure out all the rest of the crap on your own. <laughs> you're the one who's going to have to figure out how to get that software loaded onto there and make sure it's working right and all that crap. Like hashtag hell no, no thanks. And when something goes wrong, it's going to be on you to log in and try and figure it out. There isn't going to be some engineer sitting in the, in the warehouse with white gloves on instructed to take real good care of you and make it easy on you. And when you, you pay a little bit extra for really good service, but as you showed, it's just the way it works. Uh, Diane, I'm not sure about that, but the, you can technically participate today if you want to, and you don't have to, I don't, let's be honest. Does anyone really think all 5,000 are going to go in one day? I have strong doubts about that. I think it'll take a few weeks before we move those 5,000, but we'll be in good shape for that. And we only need 500 to get the L1 chain going. And I'm very confident we will get those 500 quickly. Maybe not today, but quickly. So they'll be all right. We'll be in good shape. Yeah, if the guests are added to a locker pool, they'd be earning interest. Yeah, of course they will be earning. Yes, they'll be completely earning. No worries. Yeah. Uh, and I, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm guesstimating. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I'm just not 100% certain. But I know that they are not hitting your wallet that you can go put on your LEM card that day. That's not how it currently is set up. It may change. That may change. Everyone heard that again? That may change. Like all the details may change. Right? But I'm giving you the, hopefully a really good framework to understand validating. Uh, no, software's 
that's what you're buying. You're buying the software license to the blockchain to be a validator. But you need to supply the hardware sufficient enough to run said software, an internet connection that's high speed, otherwise the chain lags. We need, you know, you need a lot of things. If you got shitty internet, you're not going to make a lot of money. <laughs> like, sorry, you're just not. Um, you like to be in the first 500. Look at you, go getter. All right. Doing the Lemex coin fluctuation will affect purchase of the validator. Yeah, absolutely, it will. Absolutely, it will. But hey, I also know that a little birdie is supposed to come on live today and bring us some really exciting news, which will probably affect the price positively to the upside, not to the downside. And um, yeah, so when that happens and it affects the price of the upside, you're also going to be very happy. So, yeah. Any other questions? Hopefully this was a lot clearer than mud. Hopefully this was a good, clean, simple, relatively thorough introduction to validating. And it makes good sense. And here's the great news about being a validator. You don't need to be a ninja. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need to know all the details. You don't need to know the fixed returns on stakings for every single time lockup variable. You don't need to know any of those things. It's all going to sort itself out. It's all going to sort itself out. So deep breath, friends. Go easy on the on the questions in the groups. Know that everything, every question, every question has definitely already been answered in that group or on a live. And that good old search button is very efficient. So please, please use it. Keep the clutter down. Make it easy on all of your fellow peers who don't want to wade through 500 messages just to find a couple important comments from Jason or I or Jake or someone else putting on an important comment in there. They don't want to wade through too many comments. If Aldo drops some of his hot math in there, people want to be able to find it easy, you know? So we all play our parts. Yes, all recorded so you can re-listen. And here's, here's something else, friends. If you see anybody asking any questions, the best thing you can do is not try and explain it to them in piecemeal because it's too hard to understand in piecemeal. That's why we ended up here. That's why I took the time out today. The best thing you do is just send them the link, right? Just send them the link. There is no shortcut to understanding this, right? Because people are going to be asking, like, where's my ROI? What's my cash flow? How's my daily returns? What's my, how much is it? You know, that's what the questions are going to be over and over again, and they're not going to get it. So... Answer the questions with the resource is always better. And it forces people to, they have to go dedicate the time to go and learn just like you had to do, right? That's the end. That's part of the deal. Uh, a, a, a community full of adulting. Imagine that. Lots of adulting. You know, the other thing too, friends, right? Like understand that there is no blockchain course. No one went to blockchain university. Guess where I learned all this stuff? Self-education, that's that's how everyone that's how everyone learns crypto. It's 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 all through self-education. It's an evolving, it's an evolving, awesome piece of tech that has the power to potentially change the world and change your personal world, of course. Um yeah, yeah, Joe, that's actually a good idea. I should make make Healy do it or get a text list just like Healy does too. Yeah. So what do we got here? Um Yeah, there'll be white glove options for the cloud hosting. A hundred percent, there's going to be. I, I mean, I don't. I see no reason why there won't be. Um, so, uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up, friends. Uh, I didn't hear back from Jay. I guess he's probably still waiting to coordinate schedules with the partner. I have every reason to believe we will still be going live today until I hear otherwise. If I hear otherwise, I will notify everyone. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to get some exciting news when that does come out. And it's going to be awesome. Hey, yesterday was awesome. This week was promised to be awesome. I think there's lots more good stuff coming. But guys, did you notice that we went into the crypto top 30 yesterday inside of one day? <laughs> That's incredible. Just incredible. Awesome. All right, friends. Hope you got some value from it. Uh, stay happy. Make the decision that feels best for you and your family. I'm not telling you to be a validator. I'm not telling you not to be a validator. I'm painting the picture. If the chain is successful, it's going to be a juice factory. It could work out really exciting for everybody. It could, but I'm not in control of the future. Can't guarantee things, no guarantees, all that fun stuff. All right, friends. Cool. Glad you guys are excited. Glad you got lots of value from it. Please just 
repost this link when people have questions. All right. Have a good one. I'm out.